Hello dear subscribers, today's subject is who is the Queen of Heaven? The Queen of Heaven is a very interesting notion that has its roots even way back uh, in the uh, days of the Old Testament as the uh, book of Jeremiah will be telling us shortly. We shall be reading from chapter 7 of Jeremiah, from verses 2, 18 and 20. Another chapter of Jeremiah, chapter 44, makes reference to the Queen of Heaven again. So, verse 18. The children gather wood, the fathers gather, excuse me, the fathers, the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead thou. To make cakes for the queen of heaven and they pour out drink offerings to other gods that they may provoke me to anger do they provoke me to anger says the lord do they not provoke themselves to the shame of their own faces therefore thus says the lord god behold my anger and my fury will be poured out on this place on man on and on beast on the trees of the field and on the fruit of the ground and it will burn and not be quenched so it is very clear here that this worship worship worshiping of any gods little g gods and that includes the queen of heaven it greatly provokes the lord he's telling you himself Look, verse 19. Do they provoke me to anger, says the Lord? Of course they do provoke him to anger. You see? And even the end of verse 18. And they pour out drink offerings to other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Look, he's repeating it. And even in verse 20. Behold, my anger and my fury will be poured out on this place, on man and on beast, on the trees of the field and on the fruit of the ground. I mean, what does it take not to understand that the main theme here, in each sentence that we read, verse 18, 19 and 20, the main theme is that this worshipping of these little g-gods, including the queen of heaven it provokes the lord to anger why why cannot catholics understand that any attention to the queen of heaven is likened to idolatry god will not share his glory with anyone with no little g god and with no little with no human now, here is an interesting, I found this interesting website, and it expands on what we just read, okay? And it's by David Stewart. As we were reading here, we have Jeremiah, verse 7 to 18. All Catholics today, Roman and Russian Orthodox alike, worship Mary as the Queen of Heaven. One only has to do a web search on their Queen of Heaven to prove that Catholics too worship the Queen of Heaven. Unlike what they say, they deny that they commit this adultery, but they venerate and they show devotion to the, her images and to her statue. And veneration and uh, devotion is akin to idolatry. What Catholics don't realize or care to realize is that the Queen of Heaven originated from pagan Babylonian goddess worship. We read in Jeremiah about the Babylonian queen of heaven. And here are the, the chapters where the queen of heaven is mentioned. Jeremiah chapter 7, chapter 44, again chapter 44 and, and till the end. Jeremiah 7.18 plainly states that God hates idolatry and it provokes him to anger. Just what we just said. Carefully notice the things that God considers as idolatry. When done in worship in the Queen of Heaven, the children gather wood for the fire, the fathers kindle the fire, and the women neither thou. This you will find in Jeremiah chapter 44. 
The whole family is involved in idolatry. Everything that Catholics do for the Queen of Heaven is sinful idolatry. All over the world today, Catholics have one celebration after another in honor to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Queen of Heaven. Notice in Jeremiah 7, verse 18, that they also worship other gods. In many Catholic cultures, such as the island of Guam, and I can mention a couple, you know, in the Mediterranean, where I live, the island of Malta, the island of Sicily, Italy, Greece, all right? A different Catholic saint is honored each month, it says here, in the island where I live each week. And we have stupid petards going, blowing off and, and people baking and, and eating things like crazy. It's gluttony and the village festival, all right, is held on the saint's behalf. All right, so let's read that again. And the village festival is held on the saint's behalf. This is idolatry, and it provokes God to anger. Isaiah 42.8 warns that God will not share his glory and praise, which are rightfully his to receive with others, just as we, ju we said previously. Every time that Catholics avoid meat, observe Lent, or bake cakes to celebrate the Immaculate Conception of Mary, they are committing horrible idolatry. The word of God never directs us to perform any such rituals. The only two ordinances in the Bible are baptism and the Lord's Supper. Now, the Bible does teach fasting, but it is never to be done in honor of a saint. The purpose of fasting is to let go of the physical in order to grasp more of the spiritual. It boosts our faith and faith is what pleases God. For it is impossible to please God without faith, as in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. God does not answer our prayers because we earn them through sacrifice or starving ourselves. This is not biblical fasting. Any time spent fasting must include much prayer. All right. So. Let's jump down to this uh, paragraph. The Queen of Heaven, that all Catholic servant worship is the same abominable Queen of Heaven found in ancient Babylon. The Catholic Church is a conglomerate of false religions. From Dagon, the half men, half fish, God of the Philistines, to the Babylonian Queen of Heaven. Catholicism is a prison house of religion whose doctrines have been invented throughout the centuries. Satan is a master deceiver. Oh yes, and I agree with that and knows the best lies to originate with the truth, and then he adds or subtracts to turn the truth into a lie. Okay? And here it says here at the bottom, one such doctrine is the Assumption of Mary, declared as an official doctrine of the Vatican in 1950. But it's nowhere in the Bible. It's totally not biblical. On a final note, I plead with you in Jesus' name to forsake the Queen of Heaven and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ alone for salvation. I echo that sentiment entirely. I am in entire agreement with that. And with that, I shall leave you today. I, God bless you all. And I hope that maybe some of you will take this message to their Catholic family and friends. God bless you all.